Hello, this is Barbara from Vienna, Austria and welcome to our last session for December daily. Yes, last session we're doing December 25th to 27th and this will fill up my book. So I'm doing um, prompt number 19 for Maud. Draw the first letter of your family name and fill this with flowers. Kind of doing that. <laughs> um, as always, Maud's prompts, first of all, they are linked below, um, are just inspiration. So you do with them what you want you can follow them to the T or you can interpret them your own way so they are just guidelines if you need some some inspiration of what to journal about and they have been huge inspiration for me I must say and also seeing Maud's Instagram posts um, have been a huge inspiration for me to follow along because sometimes I didn't know what to do until I saw her post so what I'm doing here is, my goal was to draw an H, so for my last name, Haraz, and I wanted to do it in a turn-of-the-century style, since I, I have currently, or I'm still doing currently, my calligraphy course. We haven't covered <laughs> the turn-of-the-century styles at all yet, but something inspired me to... Um, work in this style for, for today and so I, um, I had to measure um, out some, some bits so that it would be completely symmetric because when doing in, uh, like letters like this um, in, in this size if it's not symmetric you will see it immediately so you do have to put in the work and the time um, to, to make it look okay so once you have your structure down you can then of course embellish and change anything you want so I'm just making a sketch with my pencil first and then I'm going to be coloring it in with my watercolors and so instead of the flowers I'm trying to draw some sort of leafy elements <laughs> Now, I'm not the world's best drawer, <laughs> but I do enjoy drawing once in a while, and I do what I can, and um, yeah, it's just fun to play around, and sometimes things work out, and sometimes they don't. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm just going to finish my sketch here, and then continue with my watercolors. Okay, so now I'm taking out my watercolors. This is a mixture of Van Gogh and Winsor and Newton colors that I have just put together in this tin that I had got from Hearst Castle from the from California from the visitor shop, and I bought these chocolates specifically to have this tin for my watercolors. <laughs> I don't know if any of you ever do that. So I am just going to use these to color in my drawing and the H is going to be all red because I wanted it to be nice and festive. Next I'm using a green to color in all the leafy bits. Of course, you could also use markers or water-soluble pencils or water-soluble crayons or whatever you want to color in shapes like this. 
You could also use acrylic paint, which might have been a better option, but for some reason I was thinking of my watercolors for this. And while I was doing this, I was specifically um, thinking about not hurrying to get it done, but to really enjoy the process. So I was trying to concentrate on the individual parts that I was coloring and really just concentrating on enjoying the moment of filling these in. And now I made a really bad decision. <laughs> The first one of a few bad decisions. I took this acrylic medium because I wanted some gold and I didn't really have any nice gold watercolor. So I took this acrylic medium to fill in these two rings and also the, you will see, the border of the H. And it turned out fine, but it was such a pain to work with because obviously since this is not an acrylic or I mean not like an acrylic paint or a watercolor it was really hard to work with and it was clumping up and yeah I think I needed at least two coats but it worked out in the end and then now I wanted to use my calligraphy pen this is just a half millimeter nib and I'm using some black ink to go around all of my images so first I'm, I'm going around all the leafy bits and I'm not dipping in my pen into the ink straight or directly. I am dipping in my brush and then using the brush to ink up the nib which is what I learned in my course which took a while to get used to because you're using both hands but once I was used to it I, I really appreciate this method. And so after outlining the H as well, I am now finally outlining this little border that I drew around the whole thing to kind of give it backdrop. So I really like how this is so far. And then comes the part where I mess it up. <laughs> so I took my, my um, <clears throat> white gel pen, it's a signal pen I believe. And I thought I would give it some highlights where the leaves are. And beside the fact that I ruined two of these pens doing this, and I should have known better because it's not the first time I'm doing this, um, it, it just totally didn't have the effect I wanted it to have. <clears throat> and so I made an even worse decision. And so this is the second pen already that I used and ruined. <laughs> So then I decided, well, why not use some gesso instead and try to thicken up the lines a bit. But of course, doing that, I knew, I knew it when I started it, that it wasn't going to turn out nice because I knew I would never have as much control with a little paintbrush because, probably because I'm not ex experienced enough. So it came out like totally not the way I wanted it to come out. And then... <laughs> I don't know if you've ever been in the situation like you you do something and you know it's horrible and you know it looks horrible but you keep doing it anyway. <laughs> like I, I, I couldn't stop myself although doing it I was like oh my god this is so bad this is so bad and <laughs> and um, at this point I already had in my head okay I'm totally gonna delete this video and do a completely different page and not even show this. Um, and I still kept going <laughs> and um, at this point I really don't know why I kept going because in my head I was already throwing this whole thing out but then after all these thoughts I was thinking okay hang on you always say you can fix everything so just fix it find a way to fix it so what I decided to do is I first of all decided to clean up all the um, all the outlining again with my calligraphy pen because of course I had gone over some of them with my brush and once I had done that I decided to because what bothered me was that these white this, the white parts were just they were too much and they were too thick and too bold and too in your face so I decided okay what if I break those up by drawing line a line in between 
like in the middle of the white parts to kind of not show as much white anymore and maybe that would help a little bit so that is what I did and this is what came out and it's still nowhere near where I want it to be but it kind of saved it a little bit enough so that so that obviously I didn't delete the video <laughs> and that I'm actually putting it into my journal so yeah it, it was an experience it was learning and um, I'm glad I didn't throw it out because in the end it's okay and I am now putting on some whole reinforcements and one of my um, viewers commented that if you by mistake bought these glossy whole reinforcements and you now can't ink them up because they're glossy she had the suggestion if you don't have anything to sand them down with because that was one of my previous suggestions then you could also um, you could also try just putting gesso on them before you ink them up with your distress oxide or distress ink so I haven't tried that I don't know if that would work but that's definitely worth a try so after putting this red bow on it I think it looks a lot better and it kind of distracts from the mistakes <laughs> and actually it's quite okay like this so I and I really like this image here which has these, these children feeding the cow so I didn't want to completely cover it up so that's why I'm attaching this with a paper clip which you can take off so that I can still see the image so that was our December 25 and so that is the date I'm going to stamp on there with my paper poetry stamps which I got locally so I'm just taking my espresso truffle ink and very very um I don't know the word I'm looking for <laughs> I'm stamping it on there moving on to the next day December 26 these are actually um just for your information these are um you look at this book oh my god these are always two holidays in Austria the 25th and the 26th and the 24th is usually a half a day off for working people so um, this is always a really quiet time in our country and for this one I decided to make a top loading pocket by gluing together two book pages and now I am making a half circle to have an opening there which I made sure not to chop the girl's head off there <laughs> So and now we'll be working on that page and what are we doing? First of all, I got this beautiful card um, with some bits from Irene from Greece. So and I think this um, beautiful calendar page says January, I'm guessing. <laughs> and which is fine, I mean January is just around the corner. And I am making a pocket out of this beautiful calendar page. I really love this image of the birds in winter. And so I am cutting out this round circle again. I just help, had to help it a little bit to make it a little wider than the one on top. And then after inking it up, I am going to glue it in a way to leave the side open. So that could be a pocket. And I wanted to keep Irene's card in that little tuck spot. And then I have these cute envelopes which also came from Happy Mail a while ago actually. And this Christmassy one kind of was perfect for that page. So after inking that up, I'm going to attach that. And after I attached that, I realized I could have made that into a pocket as well, but I didn't think of it. And this is a beautiful card that I received from lovely Maureen in the Netherlands and she included this cute North Pole tag which I am only inking up, not doing anything else with it and sticking in there because it's so cute. And I am keeping her beautiful card in that side pocket, just picking out a little bit. And since we still have the top loading pocket to fill up, I am using this card that I got at the 
Christmas market. In case you've missed my vlog on that, my first ever vlog, I will link it below. You can see where I bought this. And I have cut it up because I'm going to use it as a tag. And I'm going to collage on the back. So I'm just rounding the corners with my four millimeter corner rounder. And one of my smart viewers has written me that she has used her heart punch to use as top of tags to make like a tab on the top. So I thought that lady is brilliant. So I'm going to try the same thing. So thank you for that inspiration. So I decided to stamp today's date on one of those hearts. And I'm going to glue those on the top to make a little tab to help pull that tag out of its top loading pocket. So I think that looks adorable. And on the back, we're going to make a little collage. So I'm taking one of these Greek book pages that Irene had sent me. And I'm using my tearing ruler. And I have a new link for that from, from Amazon UK actually because the other two I had previously stopped working one was from ebay and one was i think also amazon uk but both, neither of those worked anymore so thank you to the viewer who gave me that information so i've updated my links and so i put this down and then i have this napkin which came from elaine and i am going to use this beautiful proud stag in my collage so i'm using my brush with water to go around it so that I could tear exactly where I wanted it to tear. So this is the perfect method for tearing napkins. It is the easiest thing to do and works perfect every time. So now I have him here. So I've also uh, taken away the two plies of the napkin. You should never use the napkin with all its plies, but just the top one. So took those off. Now I'm actually using Mod Podge, which I never do. And the reason why I don't, because a lot of times um, it tears. Then when I try to attach it like now, and it didn't tear this time, which was a miracle. But usually I just use my glue stick. But now I really wanted it to blend into the background. So that's why I'm using the Mod Podge. Yeah. And for the top, I'm adding more Mod Podge, but I'm using my fingers because I have more control and I was afraid of tearing it. So after I had dried that with my heat gun, I, I remembered that it had these borders as well that I could use. And I could use those to give the stag like a little bit of ground to stand on so that he's not floating on the page. So I just cut those apart and I'm now going to attach those with Mod Podge again. Po Mod Podge? <laughs> it's such a funny word. <laughs> so those on the bottom there covering them again with Mod Podge. <laughs> How many times can I say Mod Podge in this video? And now I'm going to add some words from my um, Tim Holtz ideology uh, words and I will try to find those as well for you to link them below. I've had these for such a long time and I don't use them enough and I thought this time perfect to use black and I chose the word timeless because I think images like this are always timeless and always usable and then while I was working with my brush before I this fell fell actually on the floor and I thought oh this is great because we can use this to to um, stamp some some round circles that kind of could represent snow with my gesso so that is what I'm doing and I had so much fun with this technique I highly recommend it if you find anything small and round anywhere in your home <laughs> you should try this of course you can also do it with acrylic paint or even with um, distress ink should work or any kind of ink that should work as well but this was so fun and i really love the effect and it just adds so much to the tag so i had already dried it at this point and i think it's so cute so that is our tag that's going to go in there and that is our December 26th. So we will now move on to the next day and just wanted to mention that I'm not sure when 
I will have my next video up. I think I'm gonna take a break around New Year and then maybe have my next one up sometime beginning of January. So, but this is really long, so I hope this video compensates. <laughs> Hello, we are working on December 27th. I think I have about three more pages left in this journal to do. I'm not sure if I will do all three kind of kind of over Christmas at this point <laughs> after having worked on like Christmassy topics for almost a month I'm I'm about ready to to move on but I kind of do want to complete this so we'll see how many more I will do um, so for today I thought I wanted to include one of these these beautiful ladies came in um, Elaine's Happy Mail. Um, I was using some of her bits already, but these I haven't touched yet. And they are very, very cute. So I was thinking maybe one of these cute ladies. And in particular, I thought maybe I would use her. And there's also her or her but I think today I'm going to use her so and then I also got some doilies a whole bunch of doilies from Irid when I met her when we went to the Christmas markets and so I wanted to see, this of course would be fabulous, I don't usually go for black, that would be something different. The beige is really nice, I think, that, that harmonizes very well. The red not so much, and then there's this dark brown, which would also be nice, but I think... I think the beige is what I'm gonna go for. What am I actually doing with this? So maybe you've heard me say in one of my other videos that I am usually challenged by using round things. So I'm trying to challenge myself because I want to grow artistically. So I'm trying my best to use round elements. So I mean, one option is, of course, to just make it a tuck spot like this. But then I'm thinking, what if I just use half of it, cut it here, and just glue it right there, or even or even staple it. I haven't stapled anything yet. Would that work? You'd see the back of the staple here, which is no tragedy. But do I want that? I don't know. But I think I do want it to be a tuck spot, and I think I like the half version better. So I will cut this in half. That way I get to use it twice. <laughs> okay, so I like this a lot. Now, does it need something else? I did get these in another Happy Mail. And I love these a lot. Also very nice paper. And this of course might give it a little bit of a dash of color, which is always good. Kind of like just behind her. So why don't I cut this one out, this hexagon, and see how that might look. I'm so curious to hear how you how you're doing with your journal. Are you just watching other people journal or are you actually journaling in your journal? Are you trying the December daily? Are you way behind? <laughs> I, I get if you are because December is very busy for everybody. So if we put that 
somehow. Hmm. Somehow. Behind her. Okay, do we want that? I mean, it, I think it totally makes her pop if there's something else behind her. Like this. I like that. So that's what we'll do. So I'm just going to use my glue stick. I really love her facial expression. I think she looks so sweet and kind. I think that's what drew me to this to using her. Okay, so now we are just going to use my my white glue. It's not white glue, it's tacky glue to adhere this side here. Okay, so now we have a little tuck spot. Now what do we do with that? <laughs> what do we put inside? That's the question. So I have this postcard <clears throat> that I got at uh, Goodwill a few weeks ago. And I thought this would be, I mean, it's vintage style. These girls are very cute and I think that would be okay in there so it has a blank back side so we can do something with that so first of all I'm gonna ink it up because that's what I do and there's a space here for a stamp so why don't we find a stamp so I have this beautiful vintage box here that I bought at my flea market um, a couple months ago. I love it, especially because it is from Egypt and my hobby is from Egypt. So I thought found two different ones actually. The other one I use for my business cards. Actually, hang on, let me find that for you. So this is the second one. So as you can see, it's also from Egyptian cigarettes and they're pretty pretty beat up but I love these so much and so this is the one I usually have in my purse when I when I have out oh, here inside is very nice as well um, when I need my business cards so I love these too they were not cheap but totally worth it I'm so in love with these Anyway, so in this one, I have some of the stamps that I've been receiving from you guys. And I remember there were some Christmas ones. This one, of course, it's a bit big, but that is an option. Let me see if there's any smaller Christmassy ones. And these I actually still have to take off the paper before I put them in my album, which is why they're not in my album yet. Oh yeah, they're with these. And if anybody is not familiar with how to do that, it's, it's, the mo it's the easiest thing. You just put these in some water, let it soak for a little while, and you will see they will, they will come off by themselves, basically. And then you just take them off all the paper and then you just place them on like um, newspaper or something and then once they're dry you can um, press them under books and they're perfect so I have these whoops I have these two which came from the Netherlands which are adorable and there's this one which is an Austrian stamp which I love as well so now looking at so I'm sorry these are too big they're adorable I will use them in something else, but they are too big. So these would actually be perfect, the size. This one is a bit big. 
big. So I'm going to use one of the Dutch ones. Try to cut it out. Let's use the bear. So cute. So I will try to cut out, cut him out as close as possible. Because I don't want to spend time now soaking it. This will be fine. Let's take our tacky glue. Oops. Okay, there we go, that's perfect. So now what do we do with this? Um, why don't we have a look to see if there's another prompt we can use. I've been so good about using these prompts. I'm so proud of myself. I've done probably more than half. And I kind of remember there was one about craft supply or jewelry. Where is that? There, number 20. Jewelry and craft. <laughs> jewelry and craft supplies what makes you more happy and when the when I think is very very interesting I would understand why but when kind of always I think the craft supplies that would be my first thought and I'm thinking if ever there would be a moment when Jewelry would make me more happy. I, I mean, of course, if there's a special occasion, then jewelry is, is great. But the point is that jewelry is just something that you wear on the outside. You don't do anything with it. It's just there. It's on you. Yes, it, it can be connected to beautiful memories. And it can have special meaning that way. But crafting is... like. Crafting has become my total life. So it's a very interesting comparison, the two. Um, yeah, it's always got to be crafting. I have special jewelry pieces, sure. But it's always got to be crafting because crafting is something you can do your whole life. And it gives you so much. It's definitely crafting. So I need to journal about that. And because that's boring to watch, I'm just going to do that off camera and then be back. Actually, I'm going to use Rachel's um, labels for these. So in case you haven't seen this yet, so Rachel made, so Rachel took mods prompts and made labels into these. And I have printed them out on coffee stained paper and already cut them all out so they're ready to use. So I have them linked down below. They are free mods prompts. Um, so there's the one version that you saw before where they're just in a list. And then there's these where they're as tabs. So, and you can obviously use these beyond December. I mean, a lot of these are not even particular to December daily. So these are great to just have with you in case you don't know what to journal about. You just, you could just blindly pick one and then do that. That would be fun as well. So this is the 20. So I have that there and then I don't have to write that title. So where was that? Oh, where'd you go? Where is it? Ah, oh, there, 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 there. There we go. So I will put this aside. And I guess I'll just put it here. Okay, so what I wrote was, I think for me, the answer would always have to be craft supplies. Crafting has changed my world. It has helped me through hard times and picked me up when I was feeling down. Crafting has kept me 
sane and inspired and I have had countless hours of fun and I hope to continue to have countless hours of fun. So there. <laughs> and since we still need to add the date, I thought let's do something a little bit different. So on this background, I have these huge stamps that I have never tried out. I got these at a craft fair. And so I was thinking, what if we just stamp 27 in red? I have this red ladybug, red memento ink. I have these linked below as well, by the way, if, if you are interested in these mementos. I, have, I, I like them because they are permanent as well. So that's pretty cool. And so let's try to do that. putting my writing board underneath in the hope that it will stamp better. Of course there's this pocket, so this is this is not good. Maybe I should stamp it up there where oh, there's nothing. Yeah, let's try that. So that's actually pretty cute. I like that. Now we can put this here. And we can even still see the number. Oh, that's good, I like that. I never used to stamp things in red, but I think especially numbers or actually anything, it just really makes it pop. Red is such a beautiful color to stamp with. And it's nice how how look that they pick up each other. It's very nice. So let's add this one back. Okay, and now I believe I only have two more left. So the question is, do I see there's one? And there's a second one. So do I just do them now? Hmm. Yeah, I think I just got, I'm just gonna do both of those pages, do something simple, and then be done with this book. I think, yeah, I don't wanna keep, keep working in this for more days, so let's do this. So I have this cute vintage children's book I found at my Goodwill. And it has different children's stories in it and it's beautiful and it has some really adorable illustrations and there's one story here about this bunny school <laughs> and it has some winter scenes like here first of all there's this house which is really cute and then there's this one with the children um, the bunny is having a snowball fight and so I didn't, so this is one of the books I have a, I really don't want to cut up. So what I did is I made a copy here on some sketch paper. And I've kind of also made the illustrations a bit smaller. So actually this would fit over the whole page. Or the other option is to maybe even cut it in half because that would be cute as well. For example, to just have this part or just have the bottom part. Either of those would work. And then we could make a pocket. But I'm not sure I wanna make a pocket right now because, because of gator mouth. <laughs> so I think I will just, I will just cut this out and make something very easy. Because some days you don't feel like doing a lot in your journal or you don't have the time. And so then you just maybe want to put some pretty pictures or photos or stickers in your journal. 
talked about this before. So maybe we're just gonna glue that in and let that be that. And I actually like how the colors work perfectly with the with the blues um, together with Maud's pocket page. So that is actually perfect. So I could try to see if I could find some words or something that we could at least add. So let me see what I have. Okay, so these are some things I found. So <laughs> one that would be really funny is um, we could just put relax, guys, guys, just relax. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna do that. Then there's this one. This is like, I don't know how old this is. I don't know where this is from. This must have been a freebie from somewhere that I just printed. I mean, this one says so fun. So that is an option. Here's one that I've typed myself that says cherish the moment. I mean, that would be cute as well. Or I found these vellum quotes. I believe these were from Action probably a year ago or something because I hardly ever use these. So I think I saw one that might work but I forgot what it was. <laughs> of course, this Be Joyful, that would work. Or enjoy, no. Life is better when you're laughing, that might work. <laughs> Life is better at the beach, hmm. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna cut out this life is better when you're laughing and see how that would look. It's kind of big. Or we just... Hmm. We could just staple it there and then you can lift it up to see the image. That would be okay, wouldn't it? I like that. So let me grab a stapler. Okay, let's try not to staple this collaged card on. <laughs> Hey, I actually like that. That's kind of fun. It doesn't cover up any of the image, but it just has a, something a little something a little extra. Okay, let's put this guy back in here. All right, so we have one more to go. Oh my gosh, last page. Here we are. I still have this card from Elaine. Um, in which she had some letters and, and a list with her things. But um, unfortunately, the card is too big to fit in my journal. So I am wondering... Because uh, I don't think I can get this off without ruining it. Elaine stick, stuck, that out very, stuck that on very well. Um, and Elaine, I want to know, did you make this yourself? I'm hoping you did. It's so cute. This card is so adorable. So I think what I'll do is I will just cut around this so that I have this separately. So I will do that and be right back. Okay, so I have cut it out. It's quite thick. Um, okay, but now I'm gonna just ink it up. 
Then, I think I'm going to just make this into a tuck spot. So I will just glue it on these two sides here. And then I can add Elaine's letters by tucking them in there. And for this, I think I need no, I'm just going to use my tacky glue and then use two clamps to clamp that down. So while that's drying, I thought I would show you some of beautiful beads that Elaine has actually made herself and sent me. I am so, so fortunate that I have received some of her absolute treasures. So look at these, Elaine has made these beads herself. I mean, can you believe this? These are absolutely gorgeous. So that's the one bag, look how fun. <laughs> these are so beautiful. I don't know how, how she makes these. And then, there's these special ones that are called head pins that she has she says um they're with glass and she's made them directly onto the wire and then she's made a loop so you can actually put them on something look how gorgeous and this one is wait what did you say the shiny one is Special glass that has silver rich glass on it. So this is very special. I mean, they're all very special, but this one is even more special. So, so cool. I will definitely treasure these and hoard them for a while before I use them. <laughs> they're absolutely amazing. So what I wanted to do was to add this note with all the information about the beads and her letter. I wanted to just add these both in here. Just like that. And I can safe keep it all in here and look it up if I wanna look something up about the beads. Yeah, so I think this is it for today. So we've done 20, 25th, 26th, 27th now. The book is full. So I guess the next logical thing to do would be to show you a flip through in my next video. So I hope you will enjoy that. And in the meantime, I would love to hear from you if um, how you guys are doing with your December daily. Have you given up? Have you done any pages? Did you want to do some and then you didn't? How, how are you doing with your December daily? I would really, really love to know. So thank you so much for watching and hope to see you in the next one then. Thank you. Bye.